गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स Okay, students. How many present? Okay, fifteen. Okay. So, students, today we are going to discuss the rest of the portion of your history chapter two. And uh, previous class, I have already discussed the how company become the nabobs. Now, today we are going to discuss the how company rule expands. Okay, company. rule expands Camp company rule expands and uh, now after the grant of diwani in 1665 the east india company the east india company cameras okay the east india company got the right to collect the revenue from the bengal bihar and orissa and it helped them to progress in their military expeditions that from 1500 after the battle of plassey and battle of baksar from 1557 to 1857 ad 1857 what happened it is sepoy mutiny this 100 years they spread their territory by using various policies not only their military power as well as their other policies and the people the british the officials they are very clever these bureaucrats and officials they use their brain power they invent various policies and by using those policies one by one they annexed the indian states and the company rarely launch at that time any direct military expedition or military attack on an unknown territory instead of they used variety of political economic and diplomatic methods to extend its influence before ext uh, extending its indian kingdom so after the battle of baksar you know the battle of baksar happened in 1764 and they got the diwani in 1765 the the east india company their political uh, they in, uh, appointed residents in indian states after that they appointed residents in indian states what are the work of these residents they were political or commercial agents and their job was to serve the only serve the further interest of the east india company the only serve for the east india company they always look after the profit as well as political as well as financial profit of the british east india company use a variety of political economy yes please give some ex examples with the britishers used each of these policies okay political uh, okay political policies you have already know that uh, the battle of plassey how they how did they use some critical uh, methods as well as Uh, in the south india and the battle of carnatic when the nawab of uh, in the 
for the throne of Hyderabad and uh, in the throne of Arcot. Arcot is a small state today's uh, situated today's Tamil Nadu. It, it was situated in today's Tamil Nadu, Arcot. So Arcot and Hyderabad, so they use various policies and they successful use uh, by and they fought different battles. They took the site of one the participants who wants to be a uh, king then and uh, they just uh, appointed those kings and successfully by various battles and political uh, poli some uh, political policies. So this is the successful and uh, these policies they used in Bengal against Siraj Dolla. They also again also successful. So that's why this is the political uh, political policies. So that's why they are called king makers. They want money that if you want to become a king, then give us money. I I have uh, some policies. We have some policies using these policies as well as our military forces will help you to become a king. So this is the political policy as well as the economic policy. They already know they how did they give a uh, lot of the uh, goods and a lot of tributes to the Mughal Emperor Jahangir and got uh, and uh, as well as they got the right to trade in Surat and they also got the Diwani. So in this way different different policies they use. Okay. And now if further we will read how these policies are. So East India Company, okay, Su, East India Company was less powerful than Indian Kingdom. Obviously, at some extent, they are less powerful, but they using their policies in a way that, and they also collect their friends. They also led the Indian kingdom uh, kings against each other. So they know there are disharmony among them. They always try to capture each other's territory. They are enmity. So they use one against another and in this way they captured the entire Indian subcontinent. We will see that how did they happen, uh, how these things happened. Okay, sir, how did they use diplomatic methods? Diplomatic methods like already know that uh, they, uh, when they have been problem to establishing their uh, supremacy in Indian Ocean region, they also uh, make some marital relations with the uh, royal family of the Portugal. That Catherine of Braganza, they, their King Charles II married the Catherine of Bragan, Braganza and in this way they got uh, the Bombay as a dowry. So they received the entire Bombay fort as a dowry. So this is also diplomatic policy. So they are using different different policies. They are very clever. So what happened? So uh, what are the now, what are the duty of those? political agents called the residents. So the residents, through the residents, the company officials began interfering inside the internal affairs of Indian states and they also decide who will be the king and uh, the Indian states will make friendship or enmity to whom. They also decide these things and they try to decide who was to be the uh, who uh, was to be appointed in the other administrative posts also so this is very clever policy using by the east india company so according uh, and uh, some and uh, this policy this resident appointing resident this idea is totally came from the mind of a british official and name of the official yes lord Arthur Wellesley, Arthur Wellesley, Lord, Lord Wellesley. The name of the person, Lord Wellesley. Sorry, it is Richard Wellesley. Arthur is the brother of Richard Wellesley. And uh, Arthur also a uh, British official and he fought many battles in uh, against Napoleon in Europe. You will read in next class, class 9, how Arthur Wellesley and those things, those officials they fought against the French ruler Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay. 
So now, uh, Richard Wesley Lee was the Governor General of seven uh, of in uh, Bengal from 1798 up to the 1805 AD. So he was in office between 1798 to 1805, and he introduced this a uh, policy that is so much suppressive and the appointment of the residents and the name of the policy is subsidiary alliance subsidiary 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 alliance the name is alliance but it's not actually alliance it is actually one type of uh, disrespectful treaty between the east india company and an indian between the indian rulers what was the terms and conditions of this policy okay well, one by one i'll mention what are the terms and conditions of this policy okay what are the terms and conditions of this policy first of all as per this policy they appointed residents i have already mentioned okay number 2 according to the terms of this alliance indian rulers were not allowed to maintain uh, armed forces not allowed to maintain armed forces they are not allowed to maintain armed forces number 3 what is the number 3 number 3 is they were to be protected by the company but they had to pay for their subsidiary forces a uh, permanent troop a uh, troop of soldiers they permanently resides in the state of that particular king and in the time of any attack any foreign invasion they, they that army will save the king but the king would not maintain okay any type of army so this is the main clause of this subsidiary alliance and they had to pay for the army pay for the subsidiary forces and they had to pay for the subsidiary forces and if they failed to and if they failed to pay the amount to maintain the soldiers that is resides on the king of their uh, the king's uh, state the state of that king will will be taken away permanently as a penalty so it is very uh, suppressive policy so if you not if that king were not able to pay for the soldiers their state would taken away so this is the policy introduced by lord wellesley or lord arthur wellesley and the using this policies they submerged lot of territories like like the nawab of awadh was forced to give over half of his territory to company in 1801 and he failed to pay the subsidiary forces when the nawab of awadh due to uh, bad financial conditions and there is a huge demand that is uh, demanded by the that was demanded by the east india company when the nawab of awadh failed to submit the uh, uh, price for their army so then their half of the territory taken away in 1801 in 1801 the ad the nawab of awadh the territory of awadh was taken away by the east india company hyderabad also was also forced to 
seed territories on similar ground. And in this way, the Satara, the Hyderabad, all the states accept this subsidiary alliance. Okay. Sir, how did they? Sir, which lot of questions. Sir, East India Company. Okay, this is sir. How did they use? Okay, how did the company puppet ruler? How did the company want a puppet ruler? They want a puppet ruler who will follow their every instruction and do whatever they want. This is a puppet ruler such as Mizafar. Okay, uh, before capturing a state, did they study it well? Obviously. They study the everything that what are the main features of the state, what is the problem inside the states, they carefully study all these things. So that is the main power of them. So where the residents British or Indian? Obviously the residents are the British, they are British officials as well as the army resides in the Indian uh, states, they also the foreign fo soldiers, mostly they are foreign soldiers. Okay, That is why they rarely launched the direct military attacks, yes, I am sure. So that is why they really launched their direct military attack on Indian Kingdom. And they already showed their power in the Battle of Baksar. The people uh, underestimated at first, but after the Battle of Baksar, the Indian states, they understood that British are not a uh, simple power. They have great power. So in, arm, uh, in armed forces also, so let's call this. Okay. Sir, if an Indian ruler, okay, just mean if an Indian ruler did not take the subsidiary forces, then what happened? If the Indian rulers they did not take the subsidiary forces, they had to uh, accept this because and otherwise they will uh, forcefully they taken over their territory. And these things happened in some cases, like uh, the states of Jhansi also, like uh, I'll, um, okay. Another state that was taken over uh, forcefully that uh, the Rani Channamma state. I'll uh, discuss again about all these states that what happened. Those who did not accept, you cannot see the board. Okay. So no ruler raised their voices against these uh, alliance. Those who raised their voice against this uh, ru uh, against the uh, alliance, they, their territory was taken over. Otherwise, at the time, what happened? That all the kingdom, there are some uh, some uh, people who wants to be a king. So they also uh, communicate with those people that he wants to be a king. I will dethrone them. So those, uh, if uh, you know, so, someone, somewhat, uh, those people are the brothers of the king, the uh, in-laws of the king, the other people like uh, the cousins. They wants to be a king. So that's why when anyone they not accept that will not take this policy, so they will dethrone and they terminated from the throne or killed secretly using the uh, some they assassinated by some people secretly. Okay. So there are a lot of examples. So the, all these things policies are there. So then they place that king who, who is in the favor of the British authority. Okay, sir, did the rebellion of 1857 took a massive turn? How were the Britishers able to sur suppress this huge revolt? This is the different thing when I discuss the chapter number five, the great mutiny or sepa mutiny, I will discuss. How did they suppress those and what are the features of the movement of the revolt? Okay. How was Tipu Sultan killed? Okay, I will come that about the Tipu Sultan. Okay. So if an Indian ruler did not take the subsidiary forces, uh, so it is necessary. Yes, I told you already uh, what is the question? Just mean that if they not take the policy, they will make their cousin that someone else. They made king to uh, their family members. Okay, if they are not willing and uh, sometimes they killed secretly. So this type of policies they also used. In the case of Jhansi, they also use this type of uh, policies. 
Okay, Mir Qasim was also a puppet ruler. At first they thought Mir Qasim will be a puppet ruler. Okay, but it never happened. Mir Qasim was an independent and a powerful, uh, 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 dignified ruler. He never wanted to be a puppet ruler. So that's why when he protest, he also uh, lost in the battle and finally he ba killed in the battle of Baksar. Did the British change any of their policies? It is 1857 movement is chapter number 5, Nishad, I have already told you, they changed lot of policies. Okay. So now, uh, what happened, we will uh, start then, uh, the another unit, another small uh, violet box is there in your book is page number 16 and in this box they mentioned what power did the residents have that it is written that this is what James Mill, James Mill is a famous economist and political philosopher from subcontinent, uh, uh, philosopher from Scotland, he came to the subcontinent and wrote about the residence appointed by the company that we place a resident who really a king of a country and whatever injunctions of non-interference he may act under. As long as the prince acts in perfect subservience, subservience means submissiveness okay, and, uh, and does what is agreeable to the residents, agreeable to the residents that is to the British government and things go on quietly, they are merged without the resi uh, resident appearing much in the administration of affairs and but when anything of a different nature happens, the moment the prince takes a course which the British government think wrong and then comes clashing and disturbance. Anything when they uh, protest against, then their territories were uh, alleged, uh, they put some allegation that you are not supporting us, you are a uh, bad ruler, then remove that ruler. Okay. So, what is the time? Time is over. Okay. So, uh, that is all I am ending the today's class. Today, the about uh, it is the company rule expands and subsidiary ally. Next day we will discuss about the Tipu Sultan, the tiger of Mysore. Okay, I hope you have understand. Okay, so subsidiary alliance was a must, then why it is considered to be a treaty? Because everything uh, in, in British, they present everything in a polished manner. So that is why they, this, this is actually, uh, okay, so considered to be a treaty. So it is a treaty between the forces. So, they uh, represent it as an alliance, but it is not actually an alliance, it is a suppressive treaty. So, why British uh, were attached money, attached money, where? Why British were attached money? I do not understand, Shruti, what is the question? Why British were attached money? A junction in uh, disguised, a injunction in disguised, yes. Obviously, Nishar, Upasana, what caused the huge loss of revenue Bengal? Because they are private trade, they are illegal trade of the British officials. It creates a huge revenue loss for the Bengal. Upasana, I think you have understand what is the, you have understood what is the reason of the huge revenue loss for the Bengal. They continue their private trade and also uh, after the battle of Baksar and uh, battle of Plassey, they received a huge amount of money. After the battle of Baksar, they received oh, 1 crore 70 lakh Indian uh, rupees at that time from the royal treasury of the Nawab of Bengal. So, it is a huge revenue loss, not understand source 4, okay, source 4. Source 4 is described that uh, what are the power of the residents. If you read this, you can understand that what are the power of the residents. They are managed without the residents appearing much in the administration of affairs. But when anything of a different nature happens, the moment the prince takes a course which the British government think wrong, then comes clashing and disturbance. When prince takes his own decision, then he was uh, charged with a wrong allegation and he was removed. The same thing happened e each and everywhere. Page 16. Yes. Oyanansu, uh, you, are you understand this one? The source for
okay so that's all from today's class next day we'll discuss the tipu sultan the tiger of mysore thank you for watching